Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Cables with a ZPH. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic measurements of coaxial cables using the Rodian Short ZPH Cable and Antenna Analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic cable measurements with the ZPH. But please see the separate presentation, Understanding VNA's Cable Measurements, if you're interested in learning more about this topic. We'll start with a brief review of cable measurements. This term is commonly used to describe measurement of connectorized coaxial cables, and this will be the focus of our presentation. All cables attenuate or reduce the power of signals passing through them, and this cable loss is sometimes also referred to as insertion loss. The amount of attenuation is a function of two things, the length of the cable and the frequency of the signal passing through it. Loss almost always increases linearly with length. If we double the length of a cable, the loss is also doubled. Loss, therefore, can be expressed in units of dB per meter, or foot. But more importantly, most cables also have increasing loss as frequency increases. Cable loss can be reported as a single value in dB for the entire measured cable. And it can also be given as the amount of attenuation or loss as a function of frequency either in tabular or graphical format. Although there are many ways of measuring cables, the most common and most accurate is using an instrument called a Vector Network Analyzer, or VNA. Note that portable or handheld VNAs that are intended primarily for testing cables and antennas in the field are sometimes referred to as cable and antenna analyzers. There are two ways to measure cables with a ZPH cable and antenna analyzer. The first is so-called one-port cable measurements, in which only one end of the cable is connected to the ZPH. The other method is two-port measurements, in which both ends of the cable are connected to the ZPH. We'll cover both of these methods in this presentation, starting with one-port measurements. In one-port measurements, a tracking generator is used to inject a signal into a cable. This is a generator which is built into the analyzer and whose frequency is swept over a user-defined range. The far end of the cable is either left open or is terminated with a short. Either of these conditions will cause the signal reaching the end of the cable to be reflected back to the source. At the source port, the amount of received or reflected power is compared to the known transmitted power, and the ratio or difference between these quantities is the cable loss which is normally expressed in units of dB and which is normally plotted as a function of frequency. There are six basic steps in making one port cable loss measurements. Configuring the tracking generator, configuring the frequency and span, performing a one port calibration, selecting the cable measurement or termination type, connecting the cable under test, and viewing and or analyzing the results. In the next few minutes, we'll go through each of these step by step. On the ZPH, cable loss measurements are made in cable and antenna mode. To enter this mode, press the mode hard key on the front of the ZPH and then choose cable and antenna from the list of available on-screen options. Next, press the measure hard key and select cable loss in order to configure and run one port cable loss measurements. The tracking generator or signal source is configured by pressing the Scale Amplitude Hard key and then selecting TG Power from the menu. Note that the tracking generator power can also be viewed and edited directly from the main ZPH screen. The maximum configurable output power is 0 dBm. Care should be taken not to set the tracking generator output power too low since this can lead to inaccurate measurement results for cables with high loss. We also need to specify the frequency range over which the cable will be tested. This should cover the intended operating frequency range. To define the frequency range, press the Frequency Distance Hard key, and then either enter the Start and Stop frequencies, or enter these as Center and Span instead. The number of measurement or trace points over the span can also be specified by pressing the Sweep Hard key and choosing Number of Points. A greater number of points will provide greater detail, particularly over wide frequency ranges, but this will also increase measurement time. 
Next, we'll discuss how to connect the cable under test. For both calibration and for measurement, the cable under test can be connected to the ZPH in two different ways. It can either be directly connected to the RF port, or it can be connected to this port using a short DUT cable. There are several reasons why using a DUT cable is helpful. The first is for cases where the cable under test connector is difficult to access, such as when it terminates in an enclosure or is attached to a tower or mast. Another reason is that using a DUT cable can reduce wear and tear or mechanical stress on the analyzer port. Before making any one-port measurements, a one-port calibration should be performed. This process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match, or load, to the location where the cable under test will be connected. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or may be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually attached standards, electronic calibration units can also be used. These switch their internal standards in and out automatically and are controlled by the ZPH. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the CalSpan hard key, full one port, and then selecting the calibration kit. Then simply follow the prompts to run the calibration process. If the cable under test will be directly connected to the ZPH, then the calibration standards or calibration unit should also be connected directly to the RF output on the ZPH. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used between the ZPH and the cable under test, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of this DUT cable, since this is where the cable under test will be attached. Calibrating from the end of the DUT cable removes the effect of the DUT cable from the measurement results. The next step is choosing the cable measurement or termination type by pressing the measure hard key and then cable loss. In normal measurement, the end of the cable is left open or unterminated. Note that an open may be created by attaching an open calibration standard. This type of cable loss measurement begins automatically. If instead we choose open plus short divided by two, the cable will be measured twice, once with a short and once with an open. Attach a short when prompted and press continue, and then when prompted leave the cable open and connect an open, and press continue again. After the process is completed, the cable loss results will be displayed. Here's an example of measuring cable loss in normal mode, that is using only an open termination. We can easily see that loss increases with increasing frequency, which is typical for cable measurements. An average numerical value of cable loss over this frequency range, here 1.91 dB, is also automatically calculated and displayed. The results of an open plus short divided by 2 measurement are presented in the same way, both as a plot of loss as a function of frequency, as well as an average cable loss for the entire cable. Both the trace and the loss value are the average of the short and the open measurements. Two-port measurements are generally preferred over one-port measurements in two cases. The first is where there is easy access to both ends of the cable. And the second is when the cable has very high loss, more than about 20 dB. High levels of loss tend to produce less accurate one-port measurements. In this one-port trace, we see significant attenuation, and therefore the one-port measurement results should be viewed with caution. Making a two-port measurement of the same cable provides a much more accurate and repeatable test result. The steps in making two-port or transmission cable measurements are configuring the tracking generator, configuring frequency and span, performing a normalization, connecting the cable, and viewing or analyzing the results. Most of these steps are the same as for one-port measurements, so on the next few slides we'll concentrate on the differences between one-port and two-port methods. Two-port cable measurements are also made in cable and antenna mode. As before, press the mode hard key and then choose cable and antenna. Pressing the measure hard key and choosing transmission will place the ZPH in transmission measurement mode. In some two-port cable measurements, the cable under test is simply directly connected to both analyzer ports. 
If, however, duct cables are used to connect the cable under test to the analyzer, then a normalization should be performed to remove the influence of these duct cables on the measurement. Normalization is run by pressing the Cal Span hard key and selecting Normalize Trans. After a through is used to connect the duct cables, press Continue to run the normalization. After this completes, the through is removed and the cable under test is connected to both duct cables for making the measurement. Here is a typical transmission cable measurement result. As before, we see a plot of loss as a function of frequency. One of the ways this trace can be analyzed in more detail is by using markers. Markers are enabled using the marker hard key and can be used to examine the frequency-specific characteristics of a cable. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can either be absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types using marker type. In this example, we've used a delta marker to determine the relative difference in cable loss between 1 GHz and 2 GHz, with the result being 1.3 dB. Let's end with a brief summary. Cable measurement is primarily concerned with the loss of a cable as a function of frequency and or the average overall loss in a given cable. There are two ways to measure cable loss. The first is one port measurements in which one end of the cable is shorted or open and the resulting reflection is measured by the ZPH. The other method is two port measurements, also called transmission measurements. These are more precise and may be necessary if cable loss is very high, but they can be difficult to perform on installed cables. Calibration or normalization is also needed to obtain accurate measurement results. Cable loss measurements are usually displayed in the form of a loss versus frequency plot, and markers are helpful in obtaining detailed numeric results. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Cables with a ZPH. If you'd like more information about network measurements, cable measurements, or spectrum and network analyzers from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.